I will keep a trumpeter with me night and day. Oh, sign me up. I am ready to rip. Ah, <sighs> what a shame. My kind of trumpet playing would have had everyone dancing on the walls. Let us see what more we can learn about Nehemiah. My brother, Nehemiah. What can you tell me about the Jews who escaped captivity in Babylon? And how are things going in Jerusalem? Hi, this is Joy. At the start of our adventure, Nehemiah was in the Persian capital of Susa, a journey of about 900 miles from Jerusalem. The story of how the Jewish people ended up so far away from Jerusalem begins 140 years earlier, when King Nebuchadnezzar attacked and destroyed Jerusalem. When Jerusalem was attacked and the wall was destroyed, many of our people were taken captive to Babylon. This period of Jewish history is called the Exile. While some people remained in Judea, most of the population was spread across the Babylonian Empire or escaped to Egypt. King Nebuchadnezzar ruled over Babylon. Three Israelite exiles, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, served under the king. Seeing their faith in the one true God was a turning point for Nebuchadnezzar. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. The Babylonian Chronicles, a series of cuneiform tablets, are a record of Nebuchadnezzar's military campaigns, including his attack on Jerusalem. About 50 years later, King Cyrus of Persia defeated the Babylonians and took over their kingdom. The prophet Isaiah predicted the exile and even said that Cyrus would be the downfall of Babylon. 200 years before it happened. The Lord has chosen Cyrus as his ally. He will use him to put an end to the empire of Babylon and to destroy the Babylonian armies. This cylinder tells of Cyrus's victory over Babylon. It also documents many rights, including the freedom of religion Cyrus gave to the people who were under his rule. Cyrus allowed many of the exiled Jews to return to Jerusalem and begin to rebuild the temple. He agreed to pay for the temple repairs. A few years after Cyrus died, King Darius took over as the ruler of the Persian Empire. A second group of Jewish exiles returned home, and this time they completed work on the temple. When Darius died, the crown passed to his son Xerxes. Xerxes was king when Esther was queen. It pleases me greatly to see you, Queen Esther. What do you wish? It shall be given to you. Xerxes' son, Artaxerxes, became the next king. He was the king Nehemiah served. Artaxerxes ruled longer than any other Persian king. He is buried in this tomb, cut into the rock wall. His tomb is next to those of kings Darius and Xerxes. The kings are buried north of Persepolis in modern-day Iran. Nehemiah is stirring up the people, saying they can rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. I know. He gave me this letter from the king. Now for some questions. King Artaxerxes gave a letter to Nehemiah to carry to Jerusalem. What did the king order in the letter? Was it A. Safe passage for Nehemiah? B. Permission to rebuild the wall? C. Free supplies for the wall? Or D. All of the above? The correct answer is D, all of the above. He gave me this letter from the king, granting him safe passage. It even says we're to give him the timber for this crazy idea. Nehemiah knew that people would oppose his plan. A promise of safe passage meant that anyone who harmed Nehemiah would be punished. Sanbalat would have to be sneaky to stop Nehemiah. Look at the wall they are building! Why, even a fox could knock over this pile of stones! Ugh. Next question. Under Nehemiah's supervision, how long did it take the Israelites to rebuild the wall? Was it A, 10 years, B, 13 years, C, 3 years, or D, 52 days? 